Welcome to episode 61 of the Business Development Podcast. And today we're talking about business development in products versus services. Is there a difference? Stay tuned. We're going to chat about it. The great Mark Cuban once said, business happens over years and years. Value is measured in the total upside of a business relationship, not by how much you squeezed out in any one deal. And we couldn't agree more. This is the Business Development Podcast, based in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and broadcasting to the world. You'll get expert business development advice, tips and experiences, and you'll hear interviews with business owners, CEOs, and business development reps. You'll get actionable advice on how to grow business. Brought to you by Capital Business Development, capitalbd.ca. Let's do it. Welcome Welcome to the the Business Business Development Development Podcast. Podcast. And And now your your expert host, host, Kelly Kennedy. Kennedy. Hello, welcome to episode 61 of the Business Development Podcast. Wow. (laughs) I don't know. It, It just never ceases to amaze me that we're just clipping along in this show that we are literally over 60 episodes. I remember when I first started this show, just thinking, man, I wonder how many of these I could even do, or how long is this show even going to last? Or will people even like it? And we know the answer to all of these now, but at the time it seemed, <laughs> it seemed like a long shot, but I am, I am pleased to say and happy to say that we are still trucking along here at the Business Development Podcast, that I intend to have many, many, many more episodes, more amazing guests. And I'm just so thankful for each and every one of you who is listen, uh, who is listening to this show. Whether you just started listening or whether you've been listening since episode one, I appreciate you immensely. I hope that I'm bringing a lot of value to both yourself personally and to your career. And I hope that we are able to grow many, many, many businesses with this information and help many businesses, not just here in Edmonton, but around the world. So if you're enjoying the show and you continue to listen week over week, thank you. Thank you for, thank you for doing this journey with me. I wanted to start this episode today, episode 61, by just giving a gigantic thank you to Amin Samji, episode 60, supporting the business community. That was amazing, Amin. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It was a true pleasure to have you, and you're a total rock star in the Edmonton business community, and we appreciate you, and I appreciate you immensely. Thank you for coming on the show and sharing your knowledge with us. Today marks the seventh anniversary or seven month anniversary, I guess I should say of the business development podcast. We've been going for seven months now. I started on February 6th. It is now September 6th of 2023. Very cool. I just wanted to give a little show update. So we have 61 episodes as of this one. We have had 25 guest episodes to date. We have 75,000 total downloads as of today. Kind of coincidence, but it rolled over today to 75,000 total downloads, which was super cool. Our top episode ever is episode two, what to look for in a business development rep with over 14,000 downloads for that one episode alone. You guys love that one. I loved it too, but man, I don't think I loved it as much as you guys do. So 14,000 downloads on episode two. We are approaching 1,000 followers on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We haven't quite reached there, but I am. I think by the end of the month, we will very much be there. And just a heads up, if you're listening to the show and you have not given us a rating or a follow on Apple Podcasts or Spotify... I would appreciate it immensely if you guys would just click that follow. It helps us to reach new audiences. Whenever you give it a rating, it helps us to reach new audiences. And my gosh, do I ever appreciate the reviews you guys leave. So feel free to just do that whenever you want because I love it and I appreciate it. And it really helps me to stay motivated to keep doing this for you. I wanted to give a update on the show. So you know from the beginning, I really, really... And, and I still truly believe this. I want this to be a audio podcast. I think that you, my executives, my business owners, my entrepreneurs, the, the amazing people listening to this show, you were listening to this show. You were typically not watching this show. However, 
YouTube has launched a podcast section. And so because they have done that, I have opted to put the business development podcast on YouTube. It's going to be an audiogram form, at least for now. I don't have any future plans of doing an actual video on this show, although I've had a couple guests kind of mention that it would be cool. And I may do maybe individual episodes at some point, or if we ever get a studio where we want to do more video stuff, maybe we will. But at this point, it's not on the radar. However, I 100% am going to put the entire business development podcast on YouTube. So for those of you maybe catching this for the first time, maybe you just came across it on LinkedIn and you like to listen on YouTube or you like to watch on YouTube, I do intend to put every single episode of the business development podcast to date on YouTube. And I'm in the process of doing that right now. We are at something like 15 episodes. It's a heck of a process to convert everything over to audiogram and then to move it over to YouTube. So bear with me as I do this. It's going to be a month or two months probably to get it all up there. But if you guys prefer to watch on YouTube, you're going to be able to do that. The business development podcast is coming to YouTube moving forward. All right. So <laughs> I wanted to take a minute today and talk about a question that I've gotten a lot, a lot since I've started this show. And, and I get it. It actually makes a lot of sense. But today, I hope to maybe poke some holes and to, to build you up a little bit, to build up our business development community. I'm getting a lot of questions with regards to product versus service business development. You know, some people reaching out and saying, like, you know, I've, I've sold business development on lots of products, but... I don't know if I could do it for services or heck, I do business development for services all the time, but I'm just, I, you know, what about products? Like, could I do products? <laughs> what is different? What's the same? Yeah, let's touch on it. Let's touch on it because I have sold both. And I can tell you, <laughs> I can tell you from experience, there is very little difference, very little difference. A lot of the limitations are simply in your head. Okay. So let's talk about it a little bit. So let's, what's the big thing when we're doing business development with products? With products, you need to get people to try your product, right? And, and really, it's the same with services. You actually need people to try your services as well, because until they try it, there's really no way to understand the value of what you deliver. It's kind of one of those sad things that in life, unless you've actually tried it, it's very hard to understand what you're getting, which is why I'm always pushing customers or trying to say, look, look, you have to try this. Give it a try. You know, then you can make a really educated decision. But in the case of a product, you need to be able to get people in for a demo of that product. You know, a little bit harder for a service because they pretty much have to ha have to have a need for the service and trust you enough to try it. Typically, once people try the services, though, they do like them, they appreciate them, and they will move forward with future orders. With a product, you really have to get it in front of the customer. They have to be able to see it in action. But the process to get there is very much the same, okay? Like the great news in any business development, I don't care whether you're selling rockets or whether you're selling, you know, whatever, a, a Samsung phone at the store, okay? The great news is that the fundamentals work in both, okay? The important thing either way is meetings. You have to, you have to create trust in yourself and in your product or service. And you do that in person. You do that in person. So all the work that we do in business development, right? All of that work is always to get that in-person meeting. We want to get in front of the customer. We want to make an impression. We want to sell ourselves, sell our product or service. We do that by, by creating rapport, by creating trust in not just ourselves but our product or service. And if the customer can develop that kind of trust in you and trust your product or service, they're going to try it. They're going to buy it. They're going to give it a go. So what do we have to do? So we have to do the fundamentals, right? We have to follow the business development fundamentals. And this is great news. This is amazing news. And for those of you that had this question, understand, I get it. I get that it can seem daunting. I get that it can seem different. But understand that business development is business development is business development. I don't care, like I said, whether you're selling NASA rockets that go to the moon or whether you're selling, you know, the, the itty bittiest of service, you know, whether that be whatever, like a safety service or a janitorial service, okay? All the fundamentals in business development are the same. You have to build relationship. You have to build rapport. You have to build interest in your product or service. It is your job in business development to build interest. And it doesn't matter whether, like I said, you're selling a billion dollar product or you're selling a hundred dollar product. 
you still have to build interest. You still have to build rapport. You still have to be the person that someone wants to buy that from, that they trust, that they don't feel like they're going to get bamboozled or swindled or whatever, right? You need to build trust and you can do that the same, regardless of whether you're selling, like I said, a $100 product or a $1 billion product. You can do that in person by building rapport, by building a relationship, okay? By building interest. So what do we have to do? We have to identify the industries who will need that product or service, right? Bare bones is fundamentals. What do we need to do? We got to figure out who needs it, who needs it. And one of the things that we end up getting kind of bottlenecked into is that there's a wide range of industry that probably needs your product or service. Just because you make a robot for whatever, for welding, doesn't mean that that welding robot couldn't have other applications. Maybe it can clean things. Maybe it can do other things. Typically, these platforms have multiple use applications across many industries. So don't bottleneck yourself into one industry. Remember, there's multiple industries available for you. Always try to widen the net. Widen that net of available opportunities because the more you can widen that net, the more the more opportunity you're frankly going to have, okay? So we have to identify the industries who will need our product and service. Then we have to create target lists, right? This is, I know that this gets bypassed and a lot of you don't do it. Trust me, sit down. You don't have to necessarily follow the target list. The target list can be beneficial just for you as an exercise to try to identify companies. I can't tell you how many times that I've sat down with a customer, figured out the, ident the, the sector that we want to work in, sat down and did the target list and came up with companies that I could have never thought of. I would have never thought of it. It just, part of the process of creating that target list, it opens up avenues. It opens up companies that you might have missed. And so sitting down and creating that target list, even though it can seem like, oh, do I really need to create another target list? Yes. Yes, you do. I know. I know it can seem like a tedious, daunting task, but trust me, sitting down and creating that target list separating it out by industries, right? And really breaking it down to different companies, it's going to open doors that you wouldn't have thought of. It's going to give opportunities that you may not have thought of. And those opportunities could be worth millions of dollars to you or your employer. So think about it. Just spend some time, create that target list, okay? Once we've created that target list, then we need to identify the right contacts at these companies, right? So then we need to take some more time. We need to identify who's buying our product or service. It's not always SCM, right? It's not always the supply chain. They don't always get the message as to what is required. Typically, the supply chain is the last to know that there's a problem or a need in a company. Why? Because it takes multiple levels of management to bump it to a stage where someone reaches out to supply chain and says, hey, put out an RFP for this because we're really, we're, we're really struggling to do it. Typically, supply chain is the last to know. And so if you sell services, this is very specific. If you sell manpower services or services to an industry, you need to reach out to the people directly buying that at the company. That could be an operations director, right? That could be, that could be whatever, the president. That could be high-level management of some level. But you need to identify who that is. Don't just assume that supply chain is the right path. Supply chain is a path, yes, and it can be right a lot of the time. But remember, they are usually the last to know. They are usually the last to know. And what that can mean for you is, is that if you're not the first, second, third call for that, for that director, for that operations manager, for whoever might directly buy that service typically, yeah, you're probably not getting the call. So don't just rely on getting on the vendor list. Don't just rely on getting on supply chain. Reach out to these people. Introduce your company. Introduce your product or service. Become real to them. Become known. Your problem is you are unknown. And I don't care whether you're selling, like I said, rockets or whether you're selling $100 services. You are unknown. And just because... You know, just because you've reached out and you've gotten on a vendor list, that does not guarantee anything. That's literally a step one in a multi-step process that you still need to take. Becoming a vendor is usually still required. So whatever, great, start there if you want. But understand that's probably not the person you need to build a relationship with. The person you need to build a relationship with is the director, the operations manager, the president, the owner, whoever is going to be buying your service on a regular basis. That's who you need to find. And so that can take some digging, but it is your job in business development to be a little detective and you can do it. So do the detective work, make some phone calls, figure out who's buying your product or service at various companies, figure out the position. It may be the operations director at multiple locations. Great. That made your job a lot easier when it comes time to find new contacts. But 
understand you still have to do the detective work to figure out who is going to buy your product or service. Because if you were just knocking the doors of SCMs, you're going to be waiting a damn long time for an order to come through. Okay. And guess what? You and me both know you don't have long to wait. You can't be waiting forever. You need to identify the right people and you need to do it quickly. Okay. All right. Once you've, once you've identified them, great. Now we need to, we need to find that contact information, right? So check them, add them on LinkedIn, make a digital introduction, phone the main office, see if you can get transferred to them, find their contact information. You need to get a hold of them in person. You need to get them on the phone because if you can't get them on the phone or get them on a direct email, and I mean a email that does not get filtered, bypassed, does not go to their assistant, it goes to them. This takes detective work again. We need to do that detective work and you can do it. It takes a little bit of legwork, but you can find their contact information. We live in an amazing, an amazing age of information. We really do. The internet has amazing abilities to find people. You don't need to buy their target list. Trust me, you can find their information. You can hunt it down. And sometimes it can mean literally you're just reaching out to other people at the organization, just asking, hey, do you got the contact for them? Or what's the best email to get this person at? It works. There's roundabout ways to get the information that you need and still do it in an ethical, legal, and fine way, right? That they're not going to be like, where do you get my information from? You'd be like, yeah, I got it from John because I, I have this and I know you're going to be interested in it. So I just want to make an introduction. Okay. So we can get there, do the legwork, do the digging, and you can get to the right people. Okay. So remember the next step, once we've identified them, we need to get them on a weekly contact list, which means you need to do a little bit of detective work to find that contact information, that direct email or that direct phone number, or preferably both if you can do it. But Get them on that target list, get them into a weekly contacted stage, and then follow up weekly, okay? We have to follow up weekly until we either disqualify them or we get the meeting because we have to get them in person, right? We have to get them in person. So what's a good way to just make that initial introduction? You guys know I talk about this all the time. The soft digital introduction is something that we have today that works absolutely amazing. And I like to do this on LinkedIn. So what I'll typically do is I'll, I'll add the contact on LinkedIn and I will just do a very brief introduction as to who I am. And no, not my company, who I am. Who I am comes first. Who you are comes first. They want to connect with you as a person, not just your company, you as a person. Start every introduction with saying, hey, my name's Kate. Hey, my name's John. I am a business development leader. I'm the owner or of this company. And it's an, it's an absolute pleasure to connect with you. Connect as a person. And, and then remember, when you're introducing this digital introduction, very short and sweet, okay? Just a quick, like, I work, I, you know, I own this company or I work with this company. We do this. Would love to chat further with it. Once again, it's great for the connect. That's it. Just short and sweet. You know, attach your brochure. Let them follow up with it on their time. But remember, this, these digital introductions, they serve two purposes. They introduce you as a human, as a person, not a robot, not an AI, a person. And they introduce your company. And one of the cool things about this is, this is just the first step, but what it does is it just gave you a soft introduction. So before you were going in completely cold, if you were to make that call and call, you know, whatever, and, and you say, hey, it's Kate with XYZ Company, and I'm just looking to make a connection, they're going to be like, who? Kate with who? Now, when you make that cold call, when you make that initial introduction, even subconsciously, they've already met you. You've already had a brief introduction. They already have a good idea of who you are and what you do. And even if they don't reply to your message, they probably opened the link. They probably checked out your brochure. So you are not coming in completely cold. And this does give you an advantage, a slight one, but an advantage nonetheless over a typical cold call. And so these digital introductions in the modern day, they, they are beneficial. Take the time, add them on LinkedIn, send a really brief personal introduction. Don't, don't sell them on the LinkedIn digital introduction, not the space. It's just a space to introduce yourself, introduce your company, maybe attach a brochure and keep it very brief, very brief. But if you do this right, it sets you up for when you do make that cold call. Okay. It's going to give you an advantage that other people won't have. All right. So once we've made that contact, we've got their contact number. Great. You've got their email. Great. You've sent a formal introduction. You've asked for a meeting. 
do this weekly, right? Remember, like <laughs> most people give up after the first try. Yeah, it's like, it's a stupid statistic. Like 80% of business development people give up after the first phone call. In my mind, that's not business development, people. It's not, it's not. You need to, you need to follow up weekly and consistently until you either disqualify them. And this could be you saying, I've reached out whatever 15 times and I'm no longer willing to keep doing this. That's fine. That's a disqualification. Or they say, hey, you know what, Kate, sorry, we don't need these services right now, but we'd love to chat in the future. Great, future opportunity. Kick them into future opportunity and keep going. But you need to get disqualified. Your goal is to disqualify as many of these people as possible because guess what? The more you disqualify, the less you have to follow up on bad, bad chances. And the more opportunity you're going to put inside of your, your inbox. So what you need to do is follow up with these people weekly until either they get disqualified or you book that face-to-face -face meeting, right? We have to ask for the meeting, okay? I, I can't tell you how many times this happens is that I've seen where people will make a phone call, they'll get a connect, they'll make an introduction to the company, and they'll say, okay, great, it was nice chatting with you. Consider us for the future, bye, <laughs> right? That's, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Why? Because they, they're buying you. They're buying somebody they trust. They're buying a relationship, okay? And so when you're selling a product or service, it's very important that you get them in person. So we always need to make sure that all of our interactions, everything, the digital introduction, the weekly follow-up calls, the phone calls, the, the conversations, they're all leading to a face-to-face -face meeting. And I don't, yeah, I get it. We could be teams, could be teams, okay? I, I, still, I still see the value in it. But ultimately, wherever possible, face-to-face, -face, we need to get them in person. We need to get them out for lunch. We need to have a, 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 a great connection conversation with people. And we do that in person. So always be moving them to that, to that in-person meeting and make sure that you are asking for it. People will not give you what you don't ask for. This is the truth. And you know, like maybe once in a blue moon, the person will say, yeah, this sounds interesting. Let's get together for a meeting. But trust me, that's like, that is the blue moon. That is not the typical thing. So if you, if you need to get in front of these people, you need to ask, you need to be brave, right? Believe in yourself, be brave, ask for the meeting whenever possible, ask for that meeting and get them in person. Okay. Okay. And then remember, you know, maybe it is that face-to-face -face meeting and you're selling a product or service, okay? Now, not so much with the service, but with the product, now is that critical time. So when you're having that, that meeting, let's say that it's a Teams meeting and you're selling whatever, robots, or you're selling a widget of some type, okay? You need them to try your widget. You need them to see your robot in action. You need them to try your product, your, your software, whatever you're selling, they need to try it. And so... Remember, if, if this is your first meeting and it's just a digital meeting and there's not, an, there's not an opportunity to demo your product, in the meeting, you should be leading the conversation to the next meeting. And that next meeting should be a in-person product demo at their location, at your location, wherever it may be. You need to demo their product. You need to demo your product and you, they need to see it in action. They need to see it because if they can see it, they can see what it'll do for them. This is maybe the one kind of difference between product or service. Service, they typically know what the service is going to do. They have a problem or they have a need and that service is going to fill it. A product is the same thing, but people need to see it in action. It, it, there's something that's just so much more compelling about seeing a robot do something or seeing a software solve a problem than just being told hypothetically how it's going to do it, okay? So maybe the main difference that I want you to kind of take away from this is that if you sell a product, you need to get them in person and you need to demo that product. You need to show them what difference it's going to make for their organization, for them personally, whatever it is, you need to demo it. But if you can demo it for them and they can put two and two together in their head, it's going to be much, much more compelling now for them to want to try it out and, and try it out on a regular basis, okay? Remember to ask for the order. This is the other side, okay? You've demoed a product or service. They know what you want. Make sure that you're saying, look, John, Jen, it was great to meet you. It was amazing to meet you. I see a product need here. Is there, is there an RFP or an RFI or some type of bid? Can I send you a proposal for this product or service? You have to give them a proposal. They cannot buy something if there's no proposal, okay? So once again, you've, you've given the demo, you've got them in person. Remember, you have to ask for, you have to ask for an order. You have to ask for an order. Just think about it. If you want it, you have to ask for it. Ask for it. Ask for it. And you are going to win a lot more opportunities than you are right now if you're not. Trust me, you need to ask for it. But remember, if you've had a successful meeting, if you've had a successful product demo, ask for an opportunity to, to provide a proposal. Can I give you a proposal for this product? 
Can I, can I, is there an RFI coming out? Do you have like a bid maybe going out to multiple, multiple contracts? We want to be a part of this. Send us an opportunity to bid. Trust me, the more bids you have out, the more work you're going to win, period. It's just the rule of life. It's like, it's like the law of attraction, whatever you want to call it. You have to ask for the order. But if you're constantly asking for that order, you're going to put out a lot more bids. And if you put out a lot more bids, you're going to close a lot more deals. And that could mean millions and millions, if not billions of dollars for your business. So remember, ask for the opportunity. Ask for the RFP. Provide a bid and close more deals, period, okay? And then once you've done that, once you've closed a deal... Congratulations. It's what we did. It's what we it's what we've been striving towards the whole time, but the job is not done. The job is not done. You need to take care of your client, okay? You need to put good account management on your client. And hopefully this is separated from your business development because you guys know how I feel about this, but if not, make sure that you're dedicating an appropriate amount of time to account management and that you are looking after the client and if there are issues, they are resolved and they're resolved quickly efficiently and to the client's satisfaction. That last part is critical, okay? I've seen companies resolve problems, but they didn't resolve the problem because it wasn't resolved to the client's satisfaction, okay? So either way, like, what is the point of resolving the problem if the client will never come back? That's very important for you to think about. Always think about, is the resolve, is is the resolution that we have come up with, is, is the client satisfied? Will they buy this product or service again? Because... Regardless, if they will never buy the product or service again, you probably didn't resolve it to their satisfaction. That is just the truth. And I've seen, you know, I mean, I talked about an internet provider that I switched earlier this year because they're, you know, they had a huge issue. It was their problem. And when it came time for them to, I gave them an opportunity to resolve it. They resolved it in their mind, but it was nowhere near fair or to my satisfaction. And they lost me anyway. So remember, you need to resolve problems to the client's satisfaction. They need to be good. They need to be in a way that the client is like, you know what? The XYZ company, they had an issue, but they really looked after me and and I'm still recommending them. You want that every time, okay? You do that with great account management and great policies at your your organization. So just keep that in mind. Whatever you're selling, whatever product or service, stand behind it. And if there's a problem, resolve it to your client's satisfaction, okay? So remember... We need to follow the fundamentals. We need to be consistent with the process and hold ourselves accountable. If you can do this, if you can be consistent in uh, business development, no matter the product or service, you will have no limitations. Your limitations are in your head. If you can sell services, you can sell products. They are the same. Business development is the same. Any limitation that you are seeing, it's in your head. Clear that barrier. You're going to be able to do business development on either side. Just remember, Follow the process. The process is what makes you successful, not whatever you're selling, not the product, not the service. Your job in business development is to build interest and follow the process and get meetings. As long as you are following the process that leads you to those in-person meetings, that leads you to bid opportunities, you are going to be successful, but you need to hold yourself accountable. That means you need to hold yourself to your digital introductions. You need to hold yourself to your cold calls for the week. You can't just do them willy-nilly and expect great results. Great results come from great process. Hold yourself to a great process and watch your businesses turn around, okay? I just want to mention, if you are enjoying this show and and you do operate a business and maybe you need some help in the business development side, yeah, I own Capital Business Development in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and that's all we do. We just do straight business development for companies. So if you're in Canada and you're struggling and you need some business development help, Capital can help. We can help. Give us a shout. You can get me You can get me on my email, right? Info at capitalbd.ca at any time. You can send a note to this podcast, podcast at capitalbd.ca, and we will make sure that you get a call back and we get a conversation in because I get it. Business development can be challenging, but we can definitely help you with that, okay? All right. So just wanted to, you know what? I wanted to end this a little bit differently because we've been getting some really, really, really awesome, awesome feedback lately on the show. And some of these reviews that you guys are leaving, I know it's a little cheeky to read reviews, but some of you guys are leaving just the kindest reviews. And I just wanted to mention a couple that we got this week. So um, a seminar in every episode. 
I stumbled across this podcast a few months ago in search of the inside scoop on business development, and I was blown away by the candor and insight provided. I've since gone back to episode one, and I'm working my way back through them all while driving, walking the dog, etc. Save money on tuition and soak, soak up the tried and true tactics to hit the ground running. Thank you, Kelly. No, no, thank you. That was amazing. And really, I couldn't do these shows without you. Um, another fun one we got was finally a fun show on BD. For a while, I've been looking for a podcast that focuses on business development. Although it's one of the most rewarding and enjoyable jobs, for some reason, business development did not seem like a topic that anyone is interested in talking about. When you open any podcast platform, you'll see hundreds of programs discussing project management, marketing, entrepreneurship, and so on. There's a reason for that. In the current tech, tech mania, shows like this know how to grab attention. However, with Kelly, there's finally a show that talks about how important BD is and how no other role could function and no business could actually survive in the long, long run without it. All of the information that Kelly provides is presented in a fun and engaging way, which shows how entertaining this job can be and the massive experience that Kelly has gathered. I truly appreciate your work and I truly appreciate such a kind review. My gosh, my gosh. Yeah, if you haven't had a chance, I, I, I hate reading these because I know it's a little bit cheesy. But if you have a chance, head over to the Business Development Podcast website. There's like, man, there's got to be like almost 30 reviews at this point like this. And they blow my mind. And I honestly, I if you leave these, I appreciate you immensely. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know. I know. it. You know what I mean? I know it because I listen to tons of podcasts and I don't leave reviews, even though I love them. So I understand that it is greatly appreciated from all podcasters when you leave them a review like that and you let them know how they're doing because the feedback for podcasting is very limited unless people are reaching out and letting you know. It's really hard to tell how you're doing. So if you are enjoying this show, please follow us, rate us, subscribe, leave us reviews because we appreciate it. And it just helps us to grow these shows and reach further audiences. Okay. Shout outs this week. Kamel says caught Tim Rella, Amin Samji, Ahmed Mobasher, David Steffen and Aaron Haberman. You guys all left me amazing feedback this week, sent me thank yous and sent me great information. And we just had awesome conversations and I appreciate all of you. Thank you for sticking with us. Thank you for listening to the podcast. And until next time, this is the Business Development Podcast, and we will catch you on the flip side. This has been the Business Development Podcast with Kelly Kennedy. Kelly has 15 years in sales and business development experience within the Alberta oil and gas industry and founded his own business development firm in 2020. His passion and his specialization is in customer relationship generation and business development. The show is brought to you by Capital Business Development, your business development specialists. For more, we invite you to the website at www.capitalbd.ca. See you next time on the Business Development Podcast.